You're listening to episode 347 of Women Worldwide. Every single day you make choices. What's behind these choices? What principles do you use to make them? My special guest has a lot to share on this topic, so stay tuned to learn more. Hi, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. I've spent an entire career helping women to share stories, nurture relationships, grow their brands, but most of all, to find their voices so they can make a difference. Do you feel stuck? Do you want to power up your own voice? Women Worldwide features the stories of passionate women who have navigated big career challenges and some of the toughest changes. These professionals offer deep insights and advice to inspire you and to help you uncover what's holding you back. Let Women Worldwide ignite your passion so you can excel in life. We make choices every single day, but how much do you think about the principles that guide your decision making? In this episode of Women Worldwide, I sit down with Jillian Hoslam. Jillian is an entrepreneur and a motivational speaker, and she's also a leadership coach. And she's written a book called A Voice Out of Poverty, because Jillian, when she was young, was faced with life and death decisions. And it was those principles that she learned that guided her. We talk about her gut instincts, some of the choices that she had to make and how you can find your principles and make the best choices to find success in your life too. But I could go on about Jillian. I think it's time she shares her story and her advice with you. Hi, Jillian. Welcome to Women Worldwide. Thank you, Deirdre. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm delighted to be here. Well, I read about you. I've watched your TED Talk. You're absolutely inspiring. So I want to dive right into your journey. And first off, as a child, you had to make some really important decisions. And I think that you also learned some principles that you had to trust in decision making. Maybe you'll just share a few of those choices as a part of your journey. I think, Deirdre, when you're a child, um, you don't know much about decision making and, you know, you don't have those um, analytical skills, etc. that you're taught when, you know, as you're growing up. So as a child, I think it all boils down to how much do you love someone or something? So when I was little and my little baby sister was brought home from the hospital and we were told that she has basically between one and three days to live. Um, your instantly your 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 first thought is really does she have just three days to live and so the first thing that came to me was not if I could help it I'm not going to give up on her I loved her little fingers and toes and it was the first time in my life of course my parents had lost four uh, children before that all to poverty malnutrition and dehydration etc and all before the ages of six months Oh but for me, she was the first little one that I could really engage with and I could understand that she was my baby sister. So the first thing that came to me was not if I could help it. And your decision is made on gut, in, gut instinct, your love that you know you feel for her. And then with that, my dad always used to say, please do not ask anyone for help. If we don't have anything, we will just do without it. My dad was... Um, uh, an ex-captain from the British Army. He grew up with not asking anybody for anything. Did you know? Was very proud man. But for me, it was no. What do children need? Children need milk. Where have I seen milk at the tea shop? So I ran to the tea shop every day and stood there with a the bowl in my hand and asked for milk. If I didn't do that, um, where would we be today? Where would Susan be today? She lived past you know, three days, three weeks, three years, and today she's married with two lovely children of her own. So I think the best thing about advice is that you can take it, but you, I mean, you don't have to take it. That's what I mean to say. Uh, so that's what I learned as a child when it came to decision making. And also the fact that you're born into abject poverty, you're born into different kind of circumstances, and for everyone, it's different. But my dad always used to say to us, just remember that this is your start. It's not your end. Your end is up to you. 
this is just where we've started because of circumstances, problems, poverty, history, whatever. But your end is up to you, so you can make the best of your life if you have to. And that's where your decision making skills come in, I think. Absolutely. So, Jillian, making those decisions as a child, not many children are faced with that type of decision making. You mentioned hearing about your baby sister, whether it was a day or three days, you knew that you were going to make sure that she lived. And you said that was an instinct. Is there a way, can you explain how someone can trust that instinct at an early age or at at any age? How do we better tap into this gut instinct or intuition that we have? I think, Deirdre, like I said, when you're little, if you if you look at children in Syria and Afghanistan, etc., there is so much trouble around them, but they're still playing cricket and football and they are happy. So there is a lot we can learn from children. It's as we age and we grow up that we start telling ourselves that we are worried about this, we are concerned about that, and we become really worried and stressed souls. Mm-hmm. But children, you can put them in the worst circumstances like we were, myself, for example, and my little sister. There were days we we woke up with no food at all. We woke up under a flight of stairs. We had no home, no house. We had absolutely nothing. But we woke up happy Mm -hmm. and excited to run in those lanes and find the next child and find the next puri or find the next curry and roti or whatever it is we had to eat. And that's, I think, what we learn as children. But as we grew up, grew up, there's a little bit of a study I've done here, is that between stimulus and response, there is a space. And I've done this on a radio program, so it's a, it's a little bit deep, but if you can bear with me. Sure. And in that space, there lies the power of choice, if that's how I want to put it. And in that, in that is our response to growth and our freedom, so to speak. And this is actually detailed in detailed uh, in more depth in the book by Viktor Franklin, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He actually talks about this, you know, after his whole story uh, in the concentration camps, etc. So if if your read, if your listeners want to go back to that book and you know check it out, that will be helpful. But I also believe that there is one great question that I read in a great book. I can't remember the author, where she asks you one question: is if you sit by yourself and you ask yourself, "What is God trying to give the world through you? Mm-hmm. What is that gift that, if we can believe that we are all here with a purpose, and what is that gift that God is trying to give the world through you, then you will understand." that calling or why you are here. And of course, in corporate life, uh, I worked in uh, the banking sector for over 23 years. We are all taught about cause and effect. Mm -hmm. You know, if we feel that we keep playing the blame game in our life, but that's because we feel very affected about what's happening to us, who's done something to us, who's hurt us, who's abandoned us. But if we actually put ourselves at cause that, you know, (laughs) we did it, Yes. Then we, we are very quick to do something about it. I, I often walk around and I see things and I say, when it's wonderful, I'll say, I did this. And even when it's not so wonderful, I will also say, I did this. Because that is that you are the cause. Everything is the effect. And what you're saying about choice that's where your choice is and and how you think and then how you, what you believe and how you act, that all plays out. Jillian, your your TED Talk outlined the principles. Uh, I'm thinking probably your book will too when it comes out. We're going to talk about your book in a second. Are there any principles that are more important through your journey? For, For example, I think one of the first principles you learned was the the focus, the have the goal. And your goal was to save your baby sister. And then later you learned uh, about the advice and you can receive advice, but maybe not always take it. And then another one was the way the risks. Is any more important than the other? I think bottom line, Deirdre, is my dad always used to say to us that 
you are the sum total of the choices you make. Mm. You know, so if you make the correct choices and you really want to better yourself. So when I joined Bank of America out of 250 girls, I got the job. The first thing I did was get to that computer every day early in the morning and find out all the online courses that were offered free of cost. And how could I get through all those courses? I did the same when I came to London. So I think if you want to better yourself, you can. And if you want to get to the top, you can. And when it comes to this cause and effect, um, Wayne Dyer actually puts it very well when he says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. And that has remained with me forever. And I think it's very true. We can see a terrible situation, but it's really how we look at things. And that all goes back to Robert Winston and his book on neurology and how he explains it. And all of that comes with, you know, your attitude, you know, as your attitude will define your altitude in life. And, you know, how patience is a virtue, you know, everything obviously comes to those who wait. And all of those kind of things will start to find a place in your mind and help you to get up the ladder. That's what I think. Yes. I can't wait to get my hands on your book. Let's talk about it. A Voice Out of Poverty. It's your memoir. What do you want readers to take away from your book? Share a little bit about this. Again, I think it it all boils down to a great public speaker, uh, Zid Ziglar, who said, um, it's only when you help enough people to get what they want, which is when you will get all that you want. And there is, there's a truth about that. And I've done an extensive study, uh, by a, by a great professor, Professor Post, and he's all over Google. Uh, your listeners can look him up later. I'll, I'll answer the question on that. But I think it all boils down to what Zid Ziglar said. And my book is exactly about that. It is, it is about finding beauty in the most improbable places and success is not just about you making it in the world, but rather about you bringing others along with you. That is when you find success. And that's how I started six charities out of all that I did. And I won the Mother Teresa International Memorial Award. So I think it all boils down to that one quote, if I could put it to you, you hope, generosity, community, and giving back. Yes. In the end. So important to do that. I haven't heard Zig Ziglar's name in, in a while, <laughs> but uh, very, very famous in his work. Very famous and an excellent speaker. And I think that's what we have to learn because to, to be honest, Deirdre, what is life? Life, what are you remembered for? You're remembered for what you give your service to others, not what you've got, not what you got, but what you've given. And when you listen to him speak, you then Again, you put everything into perspective. And when you give back, people start to recognize you for what you've done for others. Look at the big brands. If they don't give back, they are put down. So it all kind of ties in. It's about giving back. It absolutely does. Well, you certainly learned a lot of lessons when you were younger. Is there anything that struck you in your career as you were starting out uh, in the environment, a lesson learned, another big aha moment that maybe you could share? I think one aha moment is, again, what my dad used to quote was that it's, it's a quote by William Barclay where he says, and it's in my book, all of this, where he says, Endurance is not just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to be able to turn it into glory. And by that, he meant that if you look around you, every one of us have a story to tell. Every one of us have a past. Every one of us have been through difficult times. But if you really look at some people and say, why celebrities? Why all this them, not us? Why, you know, other people? Why not me? That's because they have taken their stories, they have taken their past, and in some way, shape, or form, they have been able to turn it into glory. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, we we all always try in life to, to be more. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be somebody, I want to be seen. But actually, if you can just think for a moment that it's more important to do more, not to be more. 
and, and do it as inspired action. And I think that goes back to finding your passion and your purpose, because when you have that, you move forward with a, with more fuel, with more excitement, with energy and wanting to help and bring people along with you. Yes, Deirdre. And it's not just do more for others also, but if you take it the other way, you can also do more for yourself because the harder you work, you know, as Henry Ford said, there's no such thing as luck. The harder you work, the luckier you get. So it's as simple as that. So just do more. Right. What, what about being good to yourself? What about self-care and you, Jillian, making sure that as you're out there with all of your philanthropy work that you're doing, and, and I believe you're, you know, you're coaching, you're speaking, how do you keep yourself balanced and, and centered and not stressed? I'm not very religious, uh, Deirdre, but I think I, I'm, I'm a little philosophical, if you know what I mean. And I do a lot of research. I like studying about the human brain. I like studying about our neurology. I like mm. to read about all these kind of things that really matter in the end. And I think once when I was growing up, I read in the Bible that it's somewhere in Matthew, I don't remember the exact chapter on verse, but it said that many are called but only a few are chosen. So with that, I'd like to say that, you know, when I was at RBS and I was working in the bank, I could have stayed there till I was a ripe old lady and just, you know, stayed there. I was loved by one and all on every flow and it was a great job. But I continuously had this calling of the, you can be somebody great or, or people need you, just answer the call to you. But many of us get that calling. We know we are unhappy. We know we are in jobs we don't want to be in. We get that call, but because of circumstances, mortgages, loans, children, whatever, we don't answer that call. We ignore it. And if we can just answer that call, we can understand that very quote that Zid Ziglar was giving us. You know, that's what I mean by, I like to sit by myself and either even if you have to cry for a few moments or even after you have to read or even if you have to study, that's the inspiration that comes to me. I like to do, I like to do things like that. Right. Taking that quiet time is so important. Yes. And also addressing your feelings. I think there's something to be said. You, you mentioned if you have to cry or if something is going on, you're not uh, compartmentalizing something that's bothering you. You're, recognizing a feeling so that you can move on and it moves through you. I think it's so important to stay in tune with who you are, what makes you feel good. And that way you can do all the things that you mentioned, Jillian. It, it's so yeah. important. I did a talk once on why uh, isolation uh, leads to depression. It's on my YouTube channel. It's only 15 minutes, but it's a great talk because it talks exactly about what you were saying. And what you do with yourself in order to find calm and peace and uh, fulfillment and to feel whole as a person. We all do things very differently. Some of us go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Some of us meditate. But it's it's not one size fits all. Day. Right. That's Definitely what not. What about as a child, though? Was, we recognize stress and when we're feeling the overwhelm. When you were younger and you were dealing with poverty and making decisions about your, your sister and, and doing whatever you could to keep her alive, were you feeling the stress? What, what was that like? And how did you handle it versus the way that you handle stress as an adult today? I think my parents were very inspirational. My mother was very, very highly charitable and she would take a person off the street, somebody we had never met in our whole lives. And we had just one little room, eight by 10 feet, where almost 3,000 people shared three toilets. We filled water from a tube well and we had hardly any electricity. And that's how I grew up. But with whatever little we had, my mother was so charitable that she would virtually bring everyone off the streets and if she could fit them in that room, she would. Amazing. And my father used to call our little room Noah's Ark because she would bring just everyone in. And we learned a lot 
uh, from her how to give back, how to share everything we had. And we, whenever she would bring someone home, we would say, but mom, we don't have enough for ourselves. And she would say, what three can eat, four can eat. She just keep, be quiet. We can share. And that's how she was as a person. My father was very inspirational. He taught us with songs and quotes and things like that. And that's why Dolly Parton is such a big part of my life and will always be. Because we didn't have any money. And my mom used to send my little sister and me to all the tailor shops in the area and to collect all these rags, pieces of mm. cloth from all the tailors. And my sister and myself were like two little mice. We used to go under the machines and put it all in plastic bags and run home. And when we used to bring it home, my mom would make all these beautiful little coats for us and curtains and duvet covers and pillowcases and all of that. And my dad used to play Dolly Parton's coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. So when I started my charity, the first thing I did was to open a tailoring center and tell them all the story of how I was inspired by Dolly Parton, how my mom made the coats. And then the girls in our tailoring center went across the city, gathered old clothes from across Calcutta. Mm -hmm and made 300 little coats for little kids in need. Amazing. So for me, the legacy goes way back to Dolly Parton and all that she has taught us. That's so wonderful. You know, Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Just such an incredible story. What, what a great memory. And your parents, are truly amazing role models too. Amazing role models. And it, we were just in one little slum. So, I mean, thousands of miles away, Deirdre, where... People would have thought you would never have heard of people like Dolly Parton. But I had a boyfriend who didn't want to know me once, didn't want to be with me because he was very wealthy and I wasn't. And my dad said, you know, I could get into all the details as to why he can't know you and why you're poor and why he's rich. But sit down. I just want you to listen. And he used to play the song for me, Chicken, every Sunday. And with that, I thought, my God, I'm better than him. Like, I'm always going to be better than him. And that's what gave me the go ahead. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a great story. Well, Jillian, it, it's been wonderful chatting with you. If you would, just some parting advice for the Women Worldwide audience, anything else that you want to share about the power of choice and making those great decisions so that it can lead to the success <laughs> in their lives as well? Well, um, I would say, Deirdre, you know, in life, we we have all these battles that we keep on trying to fight. And I've seen it in the corporate sector quite a bit. But I think we have to come to terms with the battles and the war. You know, sometimes it's all right to lose as many battles as you have to. But in the end, to try to win the war. And for us as human beings, the war, again, is mentioned in Victor Franklin's book where he says the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. So if you can understand that, and you can understand that, again, the question is, what is God trying to give the world through you? If you can understand that you have this gift, and no matter how short or long your life is, if you can learn that your purpose, your sole purpose is to give it away, you will then tend to just not bother about all these little battles, but to try to win the war in the end and to leave a lasting legacy behind because that's what we are all here to do yes to win the war and it's that lasting legacy excellent yeah. jillian where can people find out more about you your new book that's coming out i think it's july is that correct yes the 12th of july yeah. excellent right. and your work it's my website www.jillianhaslam.com and you'll find the new book there, which can be pre-ordered. There's a lot of other books over there uh, that you can take a look at. Uh, but of course, I'm on, on on all of the social media channels uh, as well. And of course, my charity site where we have six charities, mainly for women, is at Remedia Trust. So it's R-E-M-E-D-I-A, trust.org. Great. I hope everybody checks out your charities your book and follows you and learns from you. Thank you so much for being on Women Worldwide and for sharing your journey, the, the choices that you've made and helping everybody to understand some really important principles. So thank you. That's all, Deirdre. I should be thanking you. I'm more than grateful. 
Oh, thank you. And a big thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. You know what I always say, keep the conversation going and the feedback coming. You can tweet me. I'm on Twitter. I'm at Dee Breckenridge or connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, friends, until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.